friends, bring you greetings on this beautiful day and praise God for the gift of this day, for our opportunity to spend some time in the Word. And we are in 1 Corinthians 15. We're going to be picking up at verse 12 this morning. And praise God that we can be together and dig into the Word where it may continue to shape our lives. In the beginning of chapter 15, Paul began talking about the gospel that he preached and that of first importance, he wanted them to know that Christ had died for their sins, that they've been saved through him. And in the next part of chapter 15, it, it really focuses on this idea of resurrection from the dead. Uh, there seems to be something in the letter from Corinth, whether it's a sentence or a paragraph or a couple of paragraphs, in which the people in the church in Corinth were struggling with this. In fact, some were doubting uh, that resurrection from the dead was even possible. This is not uncommon. This was a difficult concept in, in the world in Jesus' time. And in fact, during the day of Jesus, when he talked about his own death and resurrection, it was a time where in one of the scriptures it says that many turned away at that, for it was a difficult teaching, difficult to understand. And so here we are after the resurrection of Christ, and Paul is teaching those who haven't even been raised in the Jewish religion, but rather uh, are those who are apart from it, those who are in Corinth, and they're struggling with this concept too. And so while Paul planted the gospel and made this proclamation that in Jesus Christ there is salvation, they're struggling with this, this element of resurrection from the dead, that we are raised to life with Christ. And... We're going to dig into that. We're going to hear Paul's argument. And I, I got to warn you, um, Paul at some points is kind of known for saying something, saying it again in a little bit different way, in a way saying that he said it and then saying it once more. And it, it is a, it's a teaching methodology where Paul's trying to, to make the connections, make the bridges. We might do a similar kind of thing by using uh, multiple illustrations or multiple metaphors in order to try and communicate a concept to somebody. So let, let's listen to Paul's words. Verse 12 says, But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection from the dead? If there is no resurrection from the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But if he did not raise him, in fact, and the dead are not then the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. And if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are all, we are of all people most to be pitied. So Paul, Paul makes this argument. You heard that kind of back and forth where he's saying, you know, for those who fall asleep in Christ, it's promised that they shall be raised from the dead. The Corinthian church is clearly having a problem with that. They're struggling. They're saying nobody can be raised from the dead. And Paul says, well, if nobody can, then Christ can't. Jesus himself couldn't have been raised from the dead. If nobody can, then, then nobody has to apply to nobody. It has to be absolute. And if Christ isn't raised, then you've put your trust, you've put your faith in one who can supposedly save you from your sins, but didn't do what, 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 you're, what you're putting faith in. You believe that he overcame sin and death, and that's the message that you receive. But now there are some who are starting to doubt this, some who are starting, starting to waver on this. And Paul's saying, if that's the case, if you want to argue that there is no resurrection, then Christ hasn't been raised, and then everything that you've believed has to be a false foundation. You can hear his argument. Paul's basically arguing much like, like a philosopher would argue. And that's something that would have been highly respected by the people in the church in Corinth. They were, these were very learned people. And so Paul takes on this approach. Let's go on with verse 20. I, I do like verse 19. Uh, it says, if, we, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. Um, if we have put our trust in Jesus Christ and then we say there's no resurrection for the, from the dead, then we're saying he hasn't conquered anything, that he can do nothing to affect our sin, and we're believing in something that has no power, and everybody ought to look at us and pity us that we've been so foolish. And verse 20 says, But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead as the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. 
For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits, and then when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come, and when he hands over the kingdom of God to the, uh, uh, the uh, hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power, for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death, for he has put everything under his feet. Now then, it says that everything has been put under him, and it is clear that this does not include God himself, but who puts everything under Christ. When he has done this, then the Son himself will be made subject to him who put everything under him so that God may be in all. Now, if there is no resurrection, what will those do who are baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, then why are people baptized for them? And as for us, why do we endanger ourselves every hour? I face death every day. Yes, just as surely as I boast about you in Christ Jesus our Lord, if I fought the wild beasts in Ephesus with no more than human, human hopes, what have I gained? If the dead are not raised, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we will die. Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning, for there are some who are ignorant of God. I say this to shame you. Wow. I mean, Paul's very blunt. But very clearly, there is some falseness rising up in the church. And as we read this passage, we're, it becomes very, very clear that there are some who are putting forth this idea that there is no resurrection from the dead. And Paul has come here and he has uh, he's argued that and said, then, then you believe in nothing. He's made that so, so evident in, in the scriptures here as he teaches us that if there is no resurrection, then Christ wasn't raised. If Christ wasn't raised, there is no conquering. If there is no conquering, then you are still in your sin and you're stuck. And then he goes on in, the, in that midsection that we, that we read. It's the, uh, the element that sin came through one man, Adam. In other words, Adam broke that covenant with God. And ever since, we have been sinning. We live both with that original sin, that, that original uh, walking away from God, turning from God, not trusting from God, and we live with our sins that we commit. And yet it says, okay, well, one, well, sin came through one man. Well, he is the, the 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 basically kind of the birthplace of sin. The end of sin or the the freedom from sin comes through one, through Jesus Christ, who is the perfect sacrifice sent by God, and because He is eternal, the sacrifice is eternal. And we live in the power of that sacrifice. And so Paul you know, goes on here and he says, hey, if, if you're baptized, you better be baptized into something. And you know, we, and Paul talks about his own life. He says, I endanger myself every day. Me and the other apostles, we endanger ourselves every day to spread the word. Would we really do this for something that is false? That would be foolish of us. Woe to us. And whoever the false teachers are in the church, whoever is raising up these falsehoods, I want you to root it out. And I want you to step up and believe on the foundation of, of what you came to be saved through. And he says in the end, he says, I do. I, I say this to shame you. And he warns about bad company. And what I suspect is that there might be some in the church who are still connected to some in the outer world and they've taken on some of those, um, some of the ideas or some of the criticisms or some of the doubts that the world has about what Christ offers. Friends, it's easy to do that. We go out in the world every day and we face some people who, who can cast doubt into our Christianity. But the answer is not for us to to try and find the truth by listening to them, it's to take those doubts and come back to Jesus Christ and wrestle with them right before God. I, I think sometimes we try to take doubts and reason them by worldly reasoning. And we need to do that reasoning in here. We need to do that reasoning with the Bible as our source book, as the one book that we turn to and we say, well, does, does this make sense in, what, in light of what God has said? So, let us be a people who never waver into the worldly ideas that Christ, in the, for, you know, that Christ is not real, that God is not real, that Christ did not rise from the dead, that there's nothing he can do about sins. 
Let us continue to be anchored in the promise and the proclamation that Jesus Christ is our Lord and our Savior, and that he came into this world because he loved us and he died upon the cross to pay the penalty for our sins out of his rich and abundant love and his mighty grace. And friends, we are free through the blood of Christ and that there is a resurrection for those who fall asleep in Christ. Let us go forth this day in the promise and the power of what Jesus has done for us. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you and praise you. Lord, we confess that sometimes like the Corinthian believers, we have times where we waver, where doubts have been cast into our faith and we entertain them. And, uh, and Lord, sometimes we, we try to reason them out in the world. We, we use worldly, logical arguments and we just, we, we, by your Holy Spirit, we pray that you would lead us back to reason with you, or you invite us to do just that. And so, Lord, help us in our thinking, help us in our belief, that we may walk in faith all the days of our lives. We praise your holy name. Amen. All right, friends, it's been great being with you this day. I pray you know always that God loves you, and so do I.